give me a minute. I will just start. So, good morning, one and all. I am Anupma Charasya. On behalf of uh, uh, Industry Institute Interaction Committee of K Excelsior Education Society's KC College of Engineering, I would like to welcome you all on this webinar on design of microwave amplifiers and quality in electronics manufacturing. I would like to welcome our chairperson, Dr. Harsh Khanna, Madam Managing Director, Dr. Sai Kiran Khanna, sir, our CEO. Dr. Pooja Rai Pradhan in their absentia. I would like to welcome Dr. Vilas Nitnavre, our principal, uh, our vice principal, Dr. Arundhati Chakrabarti. It uh, gives me immense pleasure to introduce our first speaker of the day, Mr. Dr. Pramod B. Rangaya, who is currently pursuing uh, post doctorate as a researcher at Angstrom Laboratory of Uppsala University, Sweden in the field of microwave medical engineering group. He obtained his graduation from Dr. Ambedkar Institute of Technology, Bangalore. He did his MTech in RF communication from Jain University, Bangalore. He has also worked in Icon Design uh, Automation Private Limited, which is an aerospace company in Bangalore. He has published many papers in national and international journals. He got many awards uh, for his various published papers. He has written international uh, books, uh, one of them titled Advanced uh, Design Propelled Strategies of the Microwave Filters. He got three patents for his research work. He is also a recognized uh, receiver, uh, sorry, reviewer of uh, various reputed in, uh, journals, and he is an active member of IT and IEEE. I would like to welcome Dr. Pramod, sir, and I want him to take over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, thank you for the introduction, madam. Uh, yes, everyone able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. It is. Very good. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, today we will be discussing on uh, some of the uh, aspects of designing a microamplifier. So today's uh, talk will be like uh, with the title "Design of Microamplifier Using Linear and Nonlinear Models." I am Pramod Kibirangaya, working as a researcher, as already Madam suggested. So I will talk about a uh, few things about me. So I started my career with. Uh, uh, writing a model for uh, some of the EDA tools, and later on I, uh, I shifted, I turned myself towards uh, designing of microwave elements, uh, like design, characterization, and optimization of RF and uh, RF devices, both active and passive devices. And I'm good at uh, doing board level tuning and optimization of matching circuits. And devices like low noise amplifier, oscillator, mixers, power amplifier, circuit linearization, and the uh, making a circuit stability and some of the strategies. And uh, regarding my qualification, uh, I got a PhD degree in electronics engineering from Jain University uh, in 2017. And I did my master's with uh, RF communication and also uh, bachelor degree. So, before starting with my topic, I would like to talk about uh, our university. Uppsala University is one of the oldest in Scandinavian region, uh, and it is a uh, uh, is a First university founded in 14th century. It's having good ranking across the world, like uh, it's having 63 uh, ranking, uh, uh, 63 ranking uh, uh, in the academic ranking, and QS2 1 and 2, and uh, Times <coughs> Higher Education 86. And we have got more than 40,000 students. We have got uh, various campuses across the city, and uh, uh, we have got um, more than 16,000 master students, and it has affected more than uh, 163 different nation students and also faculty. And the best part is that it is having eight Nobel prizes. Uh, university has got a <laughs> good number of Nobel prizes, and uh, we have got more than 3,000 teachers and researchers. I'm one among them, and uh, we do have more the PS students, like uh, 2,000 PS students, and uh, we have got more than 6,000 PS students. 
and uh, we have our several campuses i am working with an angstrom laboratory which is uh, uh, which deals with more with engineering technology and space physics and chemistry we have got an fabrication facility we have got a clean room and uh, um, and uppsala university is having the prestigious microbe laboratory so that is the best part i'm working with the clean room as well as uh, medical application so my content of a topic will be i'm just starting about why the simulation and why the, in a, i will start with the simulations of uh, micro circuits and then i'll become more specific towards an amplifier and then i will be classifying the models based on my knowledge and i will be describing about some of the simulators and uh, i will be talking about different classes of em structure simulation because most of the research happens in india based on em structures and followed by that i will be describing about some of the idea tools computing speed and then i will be focusing more towards lna and i will talk about some logical concepts and i will in short i will give a brief things about some of the idea tools so when we start about uh, scope of this why we have to discuss about the uh, simulations or making a circuit or design or any kind of thing in not only in electronics and even in mechanical or anything so once we want to design or we want to make certain things we will start with a basic concept so basic concept means we will write on a paper and we will uh, think about what are the ingredients required for the design and we will be looking at uh, uh, what are the um, techniques or what are the topology has to be used and uh, what are the things should be incorporated in manual calculation all those things will come with the uh, all those things will uh, all those things uh, will come with the with the basic concept like this so followed by that this is the very important things we will be working on the uh, simulation platform so this is very important why because if any industrial patterns over here that will be Uh, reflecting on the stuff the stages if i'm talking about the machine prototype this is like a manufacturing things what you have made with the simulation you will be transferring their their work file or foundry file or any kind of an uh, dxl or step files to the uh, industry or in your fabrication lab so it depends upon the efficiency of the manufacturer so if this is okay then prototype testing will happen if you are following all the properly the norms and protocol of the testing methods then the testing becomes okay if this is gets okay then concept is approved but if you are making any mistakes over the simulation world so that's creates problem and it will uh, kill you it will waste your time and also money so that's why my scope of uh, today's stop will be on the simulations and models for the especially amplifier i will be starting my talk with a generic way and then i will be um, taking uh, for the session towards the amplifier session So when we talk about the simulation world, you can see there is a 3D models should be considered and also simulation responses. So in every tool, this will be the common things like the system design, design captures, simulate, layout, verification, and EM extract. This is for only microwave. So these are the things, and every state will have a data files at the background and the net list. So there will be a data and dispersion interaction. You can see it's kind of a loop. Every state is interconnected and followed by this. So if you are making a, a mistake at any step the simulation is go wrong so i will be focusing more our talk on more of the simulation things and models which are available and then i will take into the specific discussion of the micro amplifier so when we based on your tools the data files and netlist creations varies in few tools like awr or adias it will start with some dot xml java scripts and uh, uh, c++ these are some of the Uh, like uh, computing technique or uh, programming technique used to prepare a uh, data list and data uh, net list and uh, data files yes just a moment <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, based on the uh, my knowledge i have prepared some classification of the models mm -hmm. if you open our electronics concept we will be having a majorly three domains of uh, measurements one is time frequency and space in this talk i will not be talking about the space domain instead of that i will be discussing about an em structure simulation and uh, based on like a time and frequency mix of this domain we will be getting a 
modulation. When we look at with the time domain here, uh, when we look at your uh, our um, time domain, time domain, we will be looking at the instantaneous voltage and current, and we will be looking at like uh, what is that like uh, at the node or across the branch or in the, this kind of thing measurements. We will be looking at it with the time. When you come across a frequency, we will be looking at like a complex phases of voltage and current, and also like S parameter, especially with an academic level. Most of the time, the people will look for S parameters, but uh, uh, we have to be more careful about like uh, S parameters. This only with the linear circuits. For non-linear, we have to consider with X parameters. This is the thing in our academics. So this two are uh, there the, the basic uh, demand for the measurements and uh, mix of this two we will be getting a modulation. The modulations that happens with the exponential functions of the voltage and uh, other factors. And we will be looking at uh, based on the ports. We will be looking at the voltage, current, and also power. So these are the three basic domains. Based on this basic domains, we do have some uh, models. Whenever we are uh, looking at the spice model, this you have this uh, thing that it's completely a time domain measurement. If you are performing any of the measurement associated with the frequency of modulation, it will not be giving you accurate results. So, with respect to time, we have got a transient and oscillator startups and some nonlinear switch. And models are available not only the spice model. We have got harmonic spice model. Applet transient. These are the models available in most of the tools. When we discuss about the uh, frequency, S parameters is a uh, is discussed in most of our academic uh, uh, syllabuses. But X parameter is missing. But uh, most probably with some with the recent device and all, S parameters will not uh, be sufficient to calculate uh, most of our uh, nonlinear effects of the devices. So we have to use for S parameters. And devices like filters, package integer, and linear amplifiers, and this will fall in those kind of an uh, frequency domain. And models uh, available are uh, micro office linear and uh, uh, harmonic balance uh, linear. So mix of this two, we have got modulation, and we have got HV models, and uh, we have got a steady state uh, oscillator, steady state mixers, nonlinear power amplifier. These are the devices majorly concerns with the modulation schemes. Models available are ADS HP, Micro Office HP, Applet HP. And apart from this three, we do have like HP, AC, and Applet Linear Transient. These are some of the uh, models which are available for um, our simulation. This gives a basic classification of the models, and uh, I'll be uh, talking about some of the simulators, like linear simulators. So linear simulators means majorly it's process based on the S parameters of the port. So it is and also derived parameters can be found, like gain, noise figure, stability, repression, function related. So linear amplifier designs can be done by using linear simulator. HP uh, models like harmonic balance models are like for uh, non-linear analysis, majorly like the frequency domain simulations, especially like if you are dealing with the power amplifier mixers and all these deals with an HP model. And we do have like a linear HP model. There's a linear analysis, like I want to find some uh, VI characteristics of any of the transistor. So at that time, we have to look for a bias point. So linear analysis about the bias point should be discussed. And there we can find the, um, we can find the uh, instantaneous uh, uh, current and voltages and interior nodes. And we have got a spice model, that is harmonic uh, uh, spice model, which deals with the more Time domain with the long non-linear designs. So, so non-linear transistor design and also like uh, transistor and uh, like the startup conditions also. So and uh, simulators, uh, especially for the electromagnetic uh, simulations, like 3D electromagnetic simulations, like antenna, antenna array, RF components. Uh, when we are dealing with some special microstep line and transmission line concept, has to be considered on the like connectors, interconnects. So for all those things, we should consider with the 3D electromagnetic simulations. And even for the linear amplifier design, we have to consider. And then we have got certain tools like an axiom and EM sites. Uh, so which gives not only with the transmission lines concepts, but also with the filters, connectors, and IC package. Suppose I want to mount any of the devices on the uh, substrate. So all those things is available. And uh, linear analysis about the bias point and the instantaneous current to overtake inter, uh, inter nodes, all those things and the, can be considered in this axiom on the M6. 
So when we talk about different classes of the EM uh, simulations, when I want to work with some of the devices up to three gigahertz, means uh, we can uh, end up with our simulation with a two D uh, simulations. In this diagram, you can see that one. Uh, like uh, most of our uh, ADA tools, uh, people uh, demands for a faster computer because uh, our simulation takes larger time. So in this graph, you can see that one 2D to 3D and computational time. When you are increasing your like a 3D simulation things, the computational time will get increased a lot. We have got cross-sectional server. This is a mathematical technique. This is like a 2D server, so which will have a built-in model and transmission lines so based on those concepts. So it will got uh, it will get simulated. It's very faster, but uh, I recommend uh, this one. You can go up to like two gigahertz, three gigahertz if your circuit is limited to or so like ISM bands. We can still use this kind of a solver. If you are looking with uh, most of our PhD thesis or like most of the research from past one decade, uh, most of our researcher works on like methods of movement. Those are working on antenna and all. They have considered this method like methods of movement and uh, eigen models. So, like a single layer antenna, if they are performing, even with the, like uh, if they are performing metamaterials, all those things and all. So, rectangular cavities. This deals with some of the EM site based kind of thing. It's a 3D planar. It is not completely uh, 3D uh, simulation. So, it is like 3D planar. So, those kind of things deals with the mathematical technique called MOM technique. And complete 3D techniques which consumes more time for the simulation, especially like FEM, FTTD, VM, this FEM, uh, this are a mathematical technique, finite element measure and finite difference time domain, bound element method. This are the mathematical techniques used for the uh, complete 3D validation. So you can see like uh, waveguides, connectors, and arbitrary encoders. These are some of the devices expects complete 3D uh, simulation. So we do have like an axiom, these are some of the tools. Uh, uh, which are like quite computationally faster uh, and also like the 3D conductor things can also be done with that. So we'll discuss this uh, mathematical techniques in detail. When we are looking with uh, for a transmission line or any kind of a problem associated with a microwave, so we have got uh, four uh, major mathematical techniques. First one is like the finite element method technique. What it does, it takes the circuit and it will uh, divide into infinite, uh, uh, infinite uh, small uh, polygon kind of a structure, especially like distillate uh, triangles or any kind of an, uh, um, possible structures based on your geometry. So it will divide into various structure and it will solve the based on differential form of micro Maxwell's equation in time domain. This is a time domain uh, simulation technique. It, uh, it will take those elements into and uh, different different uh, triangles or any kind of a polygon and cumulatively it will perform a differential form of Maxwell's equation in time domain to solve the problem. So this is a complete 3D evaluation technique. It consumes more time. But as mom, it is like 3D planar already I discussed. This is uh, faster compared to these three. But uh, I still recommend this one gives a good result up to three. That's no problem. So what it does is uh, it will take a structure and it will divide into some of the built-in models uh, like uh, uh, say about this is a series uh, microstrip line, this is a brand and if there is any junction to consider as an empty and if there is a cross, it will have M cross like that it will uh, divide the structure into various uh, uh, possible structure and it will integrate. So that's why this technique forms like integral form of Maxwell's equation in frequency domain. This is the only technique which deals with the frequency domain uh, solving. So it's quite very faster and also compared to this three and uh, up to three gigahertz, it gives a very good result. So, and it's a 3D planar technique. And we have got a uh, latest very complex, very good uh, mathematical tool called an FTTD, finite difference uh, time domain technique. This use uh, complete uh, 3D evaluation by using Maxwell's equation and time domain. Say about I want to study the characteristics of any radiation pattern of the car or any kind of a thing. It will take the geometry completely. 3D model has to be defined and has to be drawn over there. And complete evaluation will be done. That's why it takes a lot of time. And the simulations give very good results when in case of an order evaluation. And we do have one more mathematical technique called as the VM, boundary element method technique. 
So this makes with a linear partial difference equation in the time domain. So what it does is that it will take a circuit and it we have to create a boundary for the 3D boundary for the device and it will uh, um, solve the problems using a linear partial difference equation and uh, we will be giving a result based on that. So when we talk about ADA tools, uh, most of the time the people say that well, my system is not working properly as far as the why? Because you can see a lot of uh, data files and netlist will be created from by the every area tool. So we have to consider that uh, the system should be very faster. Even though when I was having in the in the past uh, four five years back, I was having a dual core i7 system. So it's, it used to take a lot of time from the like uh, if I start simulation in the morning, it used to come to the afternoon or evening sometimes. So those kind of an uh, slow computing used to happen. And in our lab, we are currently having an uh, instead of dual core, we are having a six cores with an higher frequency with single node with the remote connections. Remote connections are like uh, we will be having a server based on that. So that are quite okay compared to the simulation takes in terms of like one hour or two hour maximum uh, the computation thing. So now uh, we have we do have this remote and also distributed thing. We are using an Amazon Web Services uh, some of the systems which uh, deals with like in the six ports and six nodes. So these two are like, uh, gives, like makes our work very fast as you will be getting a result in terms of like, uh, like 10 minutes, 20 minutes. So uh, we'll use a based on your computation. See, that's why we have to think about as a designer, uh, if your uh, topology is not uh, designed properly, we will be creating lot of uh, data files and this which may not be required for the simulation, but we will be wasting our time. So we have to think about this computational media tools with the computational speed of your uh, system and processor. So, and also we have to think about what kind of a mathematical techniques we can use to minimize this. Mm. So, uh, yes. And regarding our simulators, once we come back with the linear simulator systems, we will be as a function of frequency. And if your devices consist of linear elements like register, capacitor, inductor, macro strip, and strip, and portion. So these are some of the things we require in amplified design. That's why I'm talking about this linear device. So if you are using this kind of devices, you can straight away go with the linear simulators. And circuits like filters, couplers, dividers, LNA, all these things will have a uh, linear response, so we can use uh, this simulator. And measurement associated with experimental can be done here. As I already mentioned, that uh, gain, stability, noise, figure, reflection, portions, circles, all those things can be made by using this linear simulator. But if by using this linear simulator, so if you are making any of the uh, any of the non-linear effects like uh, mixers, compression point, all those things, and that's strong. So I'll be discussing in details what is the difference between a linear simulator and non-linear simulator with an examples. And if you are making like in startup conditions for the like as in terms of one like an oscillator. But it can perform some of the step responses and input systems of the system that can be done. And when we talk about HP, this is majorly for the non-linear uh, amplifiers, uh, sorry, non-linear uh, circuits. So if you are dealing with the power amplifier mixers and oscillators, all those things, this will be very useful. So what it does, it will have a linear sub-circuits and non-linear sub-circuits. In every simulation, it will have an interaction between these two sub-circuits and it will give a result. So this is quite a, a good technique for uh, non-linear circuits uh, compared to linear simulators. And we have got linearized HP simulators. What it does is considered not only with the uh, HP thing, it will consider some of the linear elements characteristics and uh, also for the sources uh, and uh, it will take some of the things from the spice model and we can have some uh, uh, instantaneous uh, time domain measurement like instantaneous voltage current uh, and uh, power related uh, problems can be solved by using this linear HP simulator and the H5 simulator is completely a uh, time domain simulator so it is much much better than your spice models and it can tolerate non-linearity uh, can have strong non-linearity functions with respect to time domain and especially for oscillator and if you are uh, making any of the modulations with respect to like amplitude kind of the thing 
S by small of 10 years, but it cannot do any non-linear noise analysis. We have to think about this linear noise analysis by using like uh, uh, derived parameters and all. We can still go with the linear uh, simulators, but uh, this S by models cannot make non-linear uh, noise analysis. So for that, we have to go with the next technical and uh, like technical. So, and but it can solve with the, some of the problems associated with transmission line. And um, if your uh, design is based on the matrix calculation, like S parameter, Y, Z for uh, uh, current and voltage calculations, influence, say, etc., those things can be managed with it. And uh, yes, uh, high Q technical circuits also can be managed with this. And uh, I don't like to say it's a new technique no. compared to other models, on it's new. But it's almost like an eight to ten years old. Uh, so this is can this can make a nonlinear circuits uh, a nonlinear nice uh, characteristic can be made. And this is completely depends upon uh, like uh, what kind of models you are getting from the vendors. If the vendors are providing a flat model for your substance, then it's fine. If it is like you you also have to prepare your model, then you have to care, be careful about that. Um, what you are preparing the model. So yes, this is the latest technique. So we will consider once I start with an example, I will be discussing all these models. So now I'll be talking about microwave amplifier. Now I'll be coming for a specific talk like microwave amplifier. So basically a microwave amplifier means uh, when you start designing any of the amplifier um, directly uh, on paper, you should decide about what kind of a transistor you are going to use. So, for an IR frequency, it is not so easy. You can choose whatever the transistor you can make it. So, if it is like what kind of like uh, based on the families, whether you are going for an FET or BKT, so you have to think about their pros and cons, and you have to decide about the transistor. And of course, all amplifier designers. But they want to they want to make it as small as possible and it should be compact, low cost, reliable. All these things should be and it should be cheaper and it has to be made with an hybrid MIC techniques or a monolithic MMIC or SDCC. So that we have to think the manufacturing things we have to consider and uh, you have to think about transfer. This is the first important thing. First you have to decide about transistor, what kind of things you want to place and what kind of techniques you are making. Say about I want to make this an hybrid MIC technique and I want to use some dynamic and fed for this thing or not. Then the process comes. So if you are making any mistake in choosing the transistor or substrate, then you cannot achieve any of the results as you are looking for it. Say about I want to prepare a low noise amplifier, I choose one BJT, then it will not happen. So BJT is good for oscillator, not for <laughs> Uh, and like a uh, low noise amplifier or power amplifier if I want to make it. Uh, then I want to go with some of the LDMOS technique. If I'm using a uh, Galdemos uh, transistor and I want to design power amplifier, it's not possible. So like that, it is like, uh, uh, and also like uh, for, uh, say I want to make an up converter, I'm using this uh, Galdemos uh, PEMT or HMT, so then it's not possible. So, for any of the amplifier or any of the circuits, we have to be more careful about what kind of an, uh, things you have to because uh, uh, mobility of the electrons inside the transistors are very much important. And also, power rating, say about for power amplifier or eigen amplifiers, and all, we should be careful about uh, what is the power rating and all. Say about the LM, FEPT, all those things and all, it's, uh, if you are giving like it's like it's like more than five, uh, three volts, five volts, and all, you should get one. So, it's not suitable for power amplifiers. So, we should have a strong knowledge about uh, you know, what we have to use as for the uh, amplifier and uh, then manufacturing technique. So based on your package size of your transistor and based on the what are the elements you are going to use for your micro amplifier, based on that you have to choose a manufacturing technique. So if I'm talking about the general block then this is a completely like theoretical thing. So for an amplifier, we'll have one transistor with a bias circuit. Uh, we'll be having a DC supply. Input and output matchings uh, should be done. And uh, we have to consider the source impedance and uh, load impedance. And then that's it. That's quite simple when you're talking about uh, your uh, block diagram. So and then we have to think about uh, input and output voltage relationship. And then we have to consider all our uh, 
uh, exponential functions of our input voltage with respect to output, like harmonics and other things. So it has to be considered. So this is a circuit amplifier, like with the simple amplifier, and then we have to consider for input and output matching. Uh, yes. And when you are giving like input voltage things, and uh, after the matching, it will give very good signal, which is uh, appropriate thing for the amplifier. And then uh, an amplified wave will come on the on the, the load. So this about the general block structure. And uh, when we talk about classification, so there are like uh, many techniques. Uh, like uh, majorly, I will consider into two things. Like uh, our approaches will be like. Uh, Either we have to make a small signal analysis or large signal analysis. So, if I'm looking at like I want to design a low noise amplifier, small signal analysis is sufficient. So, small signal amplifier we have to think. So, models associated with small signal analysis has to be chosen, and also the evaluation and measurement associated with all those things. So, when I want to design any power amplifier or eigen amplifier, all those things and all, I should make with a large signal analysis. So. These are the two major things we have to take classification. So that has to be made. and followed by that, what kind of a biasing scheme we have to give. So based on our requirement, whether we have to go within the classes of like class E or E B or E or class E amplifier, what is the purpose? What is the application? If you are making whether it's switching things or this thing. So based on that, we have to choose first is like a small signal or large signal, and then we have to. Uh, decide about what kind of classes you are going to design for it, and then so small signal was a large signal. Why and consider I want to look at it here. Like uh, let's say about a small signal, if it is like it is not exponential function, so it is like linear things. You will get exactly if you are giving sinusoidal things, it directly you will be giving a uh, getting a sinusoidal waveform. But large signal is exponential function. We will be getting a lot of uh, harmonics, intermodulation of the things. So, so nonlinear it will disturb your Frequency and also it's not only with respect to like uh, it will change your amplitude, it will create a lot of uh, nonlinear effects. You can see it's not exactly like sinus curve. It will change your uh, even sometimes the frequency and phase of this. So we have to consider whenever if your device is like uh, devices is having a nonlinear characteristics, we have to make a large signal analysis. So it's like it's not like an exactly science. So at the time, you have to consider all the models for the simulation also to be like a nonlinear, and it should be with large signal analysis. It is a small signal analysis. Like uh, we will be having a, we will be dealing with very small input. We will not be crossing like an, uh, like a 10 dB maximum signal. Like uh, uh, we will not be crossing over that. Uh, so for though all those things small signal we can go with small signal analysis and uh, yes parameter analysis is sufficient for all those things and uh, you can use like a simple uh, uh, hybrid models for your transistor and then you can finish up your design this is not much complex so uh, like uh, this amplifier I'll say that we have read, this is from the ADS tool so this is an amplifier technique for input and output match this has been fabricated. So this is completely based on experimental analysis. So this is completely uh, small signal analysis. I will give sufficient examples based on this. Uh, so we are just uh, creating one biasing circuit uh, for our transistor and uh, input matching and output matching circuits here. So that's it. And uh, for all this uh, ground channel, we will be using its uh, wires and other things and all. So this is just topology of the circuit. This is this is still not work. We have to make. Uh, by using mom technique or any of the microstrip analysis techniques, we have to make it by using the microstrip lines and we should connect all those things. This is just a topology. To prepare this kind of a techniques, we require to make a lot of uh, good uh, layout as to prepare and layout processing file as to prepare, garbage file generation, and then going for the manufacturing. This I've just shown like simple schematics for RF amplifier. So, this is like input and output matching, and yes, and like uh, now we have to think about what kind of a measurements we have to do. So typically we have got various measurements associated with the amplifier. Uh, say about I want to do with the low noise amplifier. So whenever I'm dealing with the low noise amplifier, the uh, this thing will not be useful. Like I need not to consider, consider the like a 
again compression point, uh, dynamic range, or uh, harmonic distortion, intermodal distortion. And this is not useful when I'm dealing with any of So when I'm dealing with the power amplifier, I should consider all those effects. So our important, uh, when we start designing like a small signal amplifier means up to one to four is sufficient. When I want to discuss about large signal amplifier, then uh, point number five to nine is very important associated with the large signal amplifier. So, uh, models associated with that and uh, say about applied model or any kind of an HP model also set with all those devices has to be connected in your schematic and has to be added and simulated. So these are some of the things that has to be considered with respect to like uh, designing any typical or uh, amplifier. So when I talk about power amplifier, of course uh, it should be like a, a, like a representative in a logarithmic form like output uh, power divided by Input power and functions are very important when I was dealing with power and power. Yes, after if you are assuming like 20 30 GB gain, it's like more than sufficient. So, and yes, of course, like uh, we will be dealing only with the power because the function of uh, voltage and current. So, we will be this is sufficient uh, to understand the application of the amplifier. And uh, uh, yes. Uh, and when we talk about generally like the receiving system, like an antenna followed by some fil uh, filters and the low noise amplifier. This low noise amplifier is since we will be receiving very small signal, then you can go with a small signal analysis. And uh, later on, we can make one uh, later chain, we can go with the power gain and the other things for that. And once we reduce the noise over here, then we can go with that. So, power gains are very important uh, for everything, and cumulatively, we should. Uh, like uh, as in case of uh, physics equations and all, we should uh, consider that cumulatively um, we can make power forget and other things with respect to these devices. Based on that, uh, uh, we can uh, decide about how much gain is required for our system and then we can finalize our design. Yes. So, and then when we talk about uh, harmonics, so harmonic uh, distortions happens when you are dealing with an uh, higher power. If you are using, if your input is more than like uh, 20 dB, 30 dBm uh, signals, then uh, you can see we, uh, with respect to fundamental frequency, you will be having a lot of harmonics, the function of all those things, frequencies. So harmonics, if it is com coming uh, lesser than like one degree compression point, then it's okay for us, uh, still we can use some filters and we can reduce all those things. So harmonics will occur in amplifier. So your amplifier design should be such a good enough uh, to reduce uh, harmonics. And there is a possibility of intermodulation when we are dealing with a two-tone uh, signal. Say about I want to use a uh, amplifier for two different signals. Uh, for say about for uh, wide band, the CDMA technical in dual band. If you are making an effort in at the time, the amplifier should not uh, make any intermodulation effect. So these are the, some of the things that has to be considered for the amplifier designers. We should avoid all these harmonics. And uh, for that, we have the small signal operation has to be done at the initial stage. But we have to like uh, see what is the dynamic range of the system with respect to input power and output power. And uh, we should, uh, when it starts with the nonlinear the distortions and all, we should uh, increase the point and uh, we should avoid all this. We should uh, use certain different techniques to avoid the, all this harmonics. You can see the distortions happens like this. So amplifiers should be not only amplifying like the gain if you are increasing the sufficient not like a lot of trade-off will be there. If your input is like this and output has come like this and that is useless. So we have to think about that. It should not have any other uh, harmonics. So this is one factor. And uh, and dynamic range. When we talk about input power and output power, of course, noise floor it is a minimum detectable signal. Based on that, we will be having noise floor. Of course, our signal should be more than this. Uh, if you say about the linear characteristics is up to here, so your power gain up to this point is sufficient, it is acceptable. Once your power gain crosses over here, if the requirement is more than a uh, year, we will be looking at a uh, compression point, 1 dB compression point, and, like this ideal amplifier should be like this. It will not have problems most of the time. So that's why when you are dealing with an gain amplifier, a power amplifier, this nonlinear distortion and compression things has to be considered. So this comes with the saturation level. So it has to be avoided. So we have to consider all these effects. So 
uh, one dB compression is fine. So we will consider up to year as a dynamic range, and uh, we should operate based on that. So we have to use that sophisticated uh, uh, transistor, and our uh, matching should be as perfect as possible in order to avoid this uh, uh, non-linearity. And uh, in, in order to increase the dynamic range, we have to make certain things. Yeah, what we will be having up to zero dBm over itself for uh, the saturation here. After that, if you want to take uh, like 10 dBm, 20 dBm as an input for uh, really, we have to be working very hard to get a very good power amplifier off for all those things. So, nonlinear region, when you are coming across the nonlinear region, we should use the sophisticated models and we have to come up with an. Uh, a good design in order to avoid the mistakes and uh, uh, even though if you are having a fertility decay, if you are having a lot of hormones and intermodulation output, then your amplifier becomes waste. So bandwidth. And also we have to consider, say about, I will be talking especially for the LNA, uh, for the transmitting system, we don't require any of the very good uh, bandwidth, but for the receiving system, we require a good bandwidth. So we, we should consider the bandwidth and also non-linear conditions, uh, especially like uh, when uh, I will show one uh, wideband amplifier as example. So at the time, in, like designing a wideband and ultra wideband the amplifiers are very challenging. So we should consider the bandwidth uh, also very important. And intermodulation. This will come when we are dealing with uh, two tones. Say about time uh, amplifying with the uh, two signals like. Uh, F1 and F2, mix of those signals will come with respect to intramodulation, almost both will mix up. This will create a lot of uh, um, unwanted components on, uh, in our uh, output. That has to be avoided. So, if you are looking at this signal strength over year and year, signal strength is quite less, you can filter it, but still it is very difficult if you are having intramodulation. So, intramodulation effect has to be considered. This is for all the nonlinear amplifiers. Uh, this has, these are the major things has to be uh, taken care. So, if you are having input with uh, say a body one with a zero dBm power, you will be getting like a lot of uh, intramodulation at the time, or like uh, amplifier becomes useless. So, these are the measurements where we don't have any other. Uh, when you are testing environment uh, sophisticated things uh, you may not be having in your lab but still uh, with the simulation what we should consider and we should reduce uh, uh, unwanted signal as much as possible it is not about just uh, reducing the noise or uh, increasing the gain of the amplifier say about uh, we have to be considered we have to be more careful about uh, this intermodulation effect and noise figure noise figure see if anything in a Signal, if they are like, uh, if you get a noise, uh, we are not uh, uh, ready to accept those things. Say about you, if you are making a sinus or a signal here, if you are getting a noise like this, it's like that amplifier is a waste. So, most of the linear amplifier, we should make a linear noise figure on massive. And for the non linear amplifiers, we have to look for non linear uh, analysis for that, that sophisticated models has to be used. Uh, let me assume that is a small signal operation. When you are dealing with that, uh, this uh, like uh, noise figure is sufficient uh, to analyze. So, like if it is increased, then that uh, like up to like uh, one dB, two dB noise figure is fine. If the sync is more than that, is like waste. So we have to consider this and calculation based on that. There are many techniques to reduce that one. So if your amplifier should amplify only the required signal, not the noise. So there are many techniques and the causes of the noise are very much more like uh, starting from your like avalanche noise because of the random motions of the signal and also like uh, thicker noise, um, uh, like uh, black noise, white noise, many kind of a noise will come into picture not only with the processing things but with the uh, other circuit there are many noises in the circuits uh, has to be avoided with respect to like with the whole amplifier. So small <coughs> And uh, we will be having, say, about an amplifier. If you are having some noise in the system, if that also gets amplified and the larger noise to signal to noise uh, uh, signals are coming over like this, so then it's uh, the amplifier becomes fused. So we should consider this uh, noise figure as a key factor. 
and the power component when we deal with this uh, like uh, there are many things like an amplifier realization based on uh, different uh, models like this and uh, like hybrid five models or any kind of a model there are sophisticated uh, model so for non-linear amplifiers and all after like the uh, models if you are getting that is very good uh, we can make it and uh, for those models we will be achieving some matching at the input and output and uh, we will be deciding about the uh, power factors and uh, we will be describing it. and uh, there are several definitions like power gain we will be looking like uh, power gain available gain transistor gain so for the transistor gain s parameters is sufficient to make it for this you should consider with the non-linear effects so these are there are many uh, there are uh, uh, many this thing like uh, there are many uh, uh, like uh, not only like um, uh, there are uh, many ways to calculate with the gain um, of the transistor and other thing. So we should consider all those effects. So and naming conventions like we will be considering uh, instead of, like even though it's like in every transistor will be like an uh, uh, transistor itself in like a three port device, but uh, we will be limiting that into two port network. That means we will be considering in terms of an S parameter parameters like. Uh, we will be considering the two port network like input and output. We will be looking at an amplification method. Most of the time, we will be grounding in source uh, and uh, uh, source side and also in terms of and like um, uh, based on your topology, one port will be grounded. Um, most of the time, input will be either uh, your uh, gate or your base based on your uh, transistor, and the uh, biasing will be either in a drain or in uh, uh, collector. Uh, emitter will be grounded sometimes. Uh, so it's like and based on your topology fashion, it will be converting the two core network and you will be having the one uh, uh, source impedance and load impedance. For that, uh, we may require a matching. And uh, we will be looking at the reflection portion from the source end and also from the towards the input end and from here the load end and also from the output end. So there are something for uh, creating a stability. If your amplifier is not stable, then it will start oscillating and it will uh, create a lot of uh, different. Uh, it will create its own signal uh, in between and uh, destroy our uh, communication network. So when we deal with the stability circuits, we have to look at it. Uh, we have we use most probably like a Smith chart, and we will be drawing stability circuits, and we will be looking at available area in the Smith chart, and we will be designing our element uh, in that one. Same for the output stability circuit is example of that. So if it's like this one is less than one and uh, uh, condition is if it is greater than uh, this is greater this is great s one is greater than one then this much uh, will be the stable and if it is a s one is less than one this complete signature will be of uh, stable and we can use them um, uh, this complete area for the circuit design so stability analysis has to be made for every transistor from the manufacturing end or anything uh, any of the transistor any of the transistor none of our transistor will be stable we have to make stabilize the uh, stabilizing circuit or stability enhancement circuit has to be prepared first and then we should follow other steps and uh, we have got like uh, some of the condition like the rollout conditions this should be greater than one and actually actually Axillary conditions uh, like it should be less than one, and uh, we have got a geometric uh, severity conditions that should be greater than one. So, these are the stability test has to be conducted for uh, our uh, circuits. And uh, for gain, how to achieve the gain, we should prefer a constant gain circles. Uh, there are several expressions for that so by using a Smith or this thing. By using the load impedance and source impedance, and all, we should prepare a constant gain circles in our Smith chart or in our uh, tool, and then we should uh, uh, we should think about for the maximize the uh, uh, gain for uh, S1, conjugate of S1 and S, S2, uh, and then we have to look for uh, uh, in the source side how much we can match for the gain and load side how much we can match for the gain, like this so we can. Uh, look for the uh, maximum gain uh, achievement of a circle and constant gain circle such to me and then we should solve our circuit uh, analysis and then we should come with a software simulation tool 
and uh, there are several expressions and several ways to calculate with the gain surface and all like uh, in, in the screenshot. So we should uh, implement all those things and we should see that you know, how much maximum possible gains with the uh, compromise of our noise and other things. So stability, noise, gain, all these things should get matched simultaneously. These are the trade-offs of amplifier circuit design. So we should consider all these things and then our matching circuit should satisfy all these conditions. And uh, I will talk about specifically one low noise amplifier in detail. So why it is important? Because just after the antenna, we will be at the racing side, we will be having this device, low noise amplifier. And uh, we will be having like, uh, we should achieve the minimum noise figure for the circuit. So we do have some simple like expressions for the noise figure that depends upon the NF min of the transistor and our uh, admitters of uh, optical admittance and also gain and uh, uh, noise resistance of that. So this is the basic things we should consider designing circuits. And the overall noise figure has to be like, and uh, constant noise figure circles has to be like, and uh, we should prepare for uh, noise resistance things. And uh, then we should go forward. So as I already said that for any of the design, first we have to choose a transistor. For this example, I use a tank, a pseudomorphic electron orbit transistor. I've chosen transistor and technique used is hybrid MIC technique. And uh, for the minimizing, I'm using LC resonance at the input and output. And uh, to increase the gain, I'm using like two state cascading thing. And the uh, interstage capacitor matching has been done in this uh, example. So this is for gain improvement. So for the gain two stage, for the noise minimizing, you'll see at both the uh, input and output. And I use the transistor. This are the first we have to design. This is a paper stage. Once we start with an, any of the design, we should be taking care. And this calculations, whatever I said, there are several calculations to prepare all those things. So has to be made initially, and then we should start with the simulation. So what was the target based on our like uh, communication change? We should get some high flat gain across the bandwidth. It is like bandwidth between like 2.3 gigahertz to 5.8. It's sensor to 5.8 gigahertz. So like more frequency, we should consider EM structure simulations. And uh, yes, we are, I'm using with the AWM micro office software. And uh, like the forward gain should be like more than 22, and noise figure should be less than two, and flat in plus or minus one and two, and the voltage supply we can go up to 12 volts. These are our targets. So we will look at it out to make stepwise. And uh, yes, flat gain noise. Figure, these are our best performance. How we are achieved? I used the uh, AWR Office ADS uh, Agilent and Smithy tool for the calculation. Techniques used are like uh, MMIC technique uh, for solving certain things or uh, HMIC. So manufacturing has done with the HMIC technique. And uh, transistor used is a pseudomorphic IR uh, from transistor with uh, brackets of 363. It's a small size one. And the gate length of 0.2 micron. And uh, we are using a gold based metallization system. And uh, my trip as you are showing the record to make it very small and uh, we will be having a level device. So these are the techniques, tools and techniques which we are uh, involved in this example. This is a basic circuit design. Already I said to increase the gain two stage. Cascading has been done. This is the intermediate matching. LC resonance for the input matching and LC L matching uh, for output matching and just uh, two the register are used for and like uh, reducing the uh, voltage and directly for the bias. So this is not a good way. We have to use a good biasing circuit. Just for an example, I've chosen this and a grounding uh, source, two grounding source that are made. And uh, um, ATF 363 or uh, 36163 is a good transistor which is having a um, negative voltage for uh, gate uh, put together and uh, positive voltage for the drain. Mm -hmm. So that's a complex and it's uh, like, this is very sensitive dialer master effect. Uh, just with, uh, just if you're having like uh, 10 micro amperes, if it's just flowing towards the gate, it will destroy the transistor. 
that means directly taking from the end or making any of the testing that will destroy your circuit. So these are very soft used uh, transistors. It's very difficult to handle. So we will be making this is a basic sketch. We will be making like what is that? Preparing with some of the calculation based on that. More signal analysis will make this kind of thing, and we will be looking at them. Uh, impedance matching and followed by that we will be looking at the sense of the cascading in nature will be multiplying the gain and gain factors depends upon the load of first and load of second transistor and uh, we will be considering all of our like trans uh, transconductance things and we will be considering this is more important related to that the casting so i will be using like in this one more brutal and i that the permittivity constant uh, substrate over here and we should think about effective carrier velocity, effective like a gate to channel separation, sheet charge density. Those are the electronic concepts and critical things. These are the things we should consider in the mind uh, about once we start about the topology of the circuit. So this is the equivalent circuit which we discussed. And as usual, like we have the input matching, intermediate matching, and output matching of the LNA. And substrate used are like a, it is like a, from the rotor we will be getting like a 12.9 um, high diaphragm permittivity substrate with height of 100 micron and the thickness of the connector of 2 micron. So it's very uh, very small connecting thing uh, for the good uh, uh, LNA design. So we will look at the block. As already said that. Uh, you see the lens matching that for the layout preparation we should use emily that is a series micro strip line as we see here junction for this thing is mom technique like mom technique and for the wires wires we should use the superficial wires so these two are important for the the as a part of the transmission line so calculation has to be done this is like 3d em such as simulations have to be done for this in order to have a better response. Similarly, for the intermediate matching, we do have biasing, which we have got an important uh, patch, and uh, we do have some bends over here. I already suggested here, right? 45 degree bend, and we are having an impronts, MP, all those things has to be simulated. And uh, this mounting, mounting has to be uh, simulated with the solder pads, with the uh, interconnects. Uh, with uh, axiom tools or EM site kind of tools or complete 3D validation apart from the moms or you can use a PPD or a BM is not essential. BM is for like uh, most probably for an antenna. At least uh, we can go with a PM and uh, FTTD or most probably the mom of two. Three guitars means mom technique is fine. Otherwise, we should use some good mathematical technique. And for an output matching, just one inductors and uh, this is for the solving pad behind the industry. So, any talk about results? So, yes, what we are looking for the flat gain. Across this thing, uh, we were looking like 2.3 gigahertz to 5.8, this is the bandwidth. So, we are like the target is for like uh, 20, 24 uh, gigahertz uh, plus or minus. Uh, 1 dB we are targeting. It's very good flat actually. The camera is not crossing. It is uh, about uh, 23.9 to uh, 24.5 minutes. It's like plus or minus 0.3 dB flatness. So flatness is very good. Uh, if it is increased uh, in a manner, then it is based the amplifier. Like uh, say about if it is a plus or minus more than 3 dB minutes, so it's a half power difference. That means one signal is getting like an um, a TDB gain and one more is like it's reduced within like uh, um, 27 degree minutes, so it's like it will destroy our circuit. So, this is a gain and noise figure. Noise figure we were limiting up to like uh, 2 dB, so it's less than 2 dB. So, we have actually this trade off also, like uh, it should be lesser than um, uh, like it's less than 1.6, and this is the minimum noise figure of the. Uh, of the circuit and this is an actual noise figure of the circuit. This is completely a linear analysis, so it's not a non-linear noise figure analysis, it's a linear analysis. And return loss, it's also very important. Uh, we will be looking like uh, it's fake. 
the circuit has failed uh, from uh, yes at least to minus eight degree. So circuit has is failed for good input matching up to uh, 3.5 gigahertz and uh, it has uh, it is failing after 5.2 gigahertz. So we have to consider this with a more circuit. So in this uh, design, what is the challenge is that S1 has to be S22 is good. It is less than 10 thing. Output matching is good, but input matching has to be properly. So optimization of your microstrip line and the uh, LC resonance has to be prepared and again and again uh, to make uh, a good circuit. And stability. Stability is assured. So this should be greater than 0 and the K1 should be greater than 1. That's assured. So stability actual, noise figure actual, gain actual, but it scales with the return loss. And uh, these are the based on S price model. It is like instantaneous voltage, and based on that, we have uh, placed a probe in a circuit. So to look after that. So yes. And VSW, this is the uh, like uh, is uh, one more form of looking at the return loss. So it's good up to it. Like S2 is very good. And uh, after all, it's working good after 3.3 gigahertz to 5.8 gigahertz. So it's very important uh, when, in case of a low noise amplifier, we should consider the antenna speed of the VSWR, and after that, we'll be connecting for an amplifier. It's very important measurement. It scales uh, up to 3.3 gigahertz. So, yes, these are some of the layout as to be prepared. And I've created a lot of uh, wires across the circuits uh, to like reduce the charge and to the circuit uh, to save our circuit. As I said, this transistor is like a, mm, it's a very sensitive transistor, volume matching effect. So if you're not placing all those things charged directly to the ground, so it will disturb. So this is an input port and output port, and the voltage supply is kind of done over here. And what is interesting is that the uh, negative voltage supply has to be provided over here. Uh, for the uh, gates of So, if I'm talking about uh, some of the Dalai Master subjects, so 12 point, uh, say about uh, 12 point 12.9 uh, direct constant means we should consider uh, what are the crystal structure of it. And this is a uh, Dalai Master subject I'm talking about. And group density and number of atoms uh, for the one centimeter cube. And we should see about electron wavelength. And temperature, density, that constant, and we should consider uh, what is effective electron mass and the Wolf's condition. Since even though it is like an FPT kind of a things we are using, uh, but still we should consider the effective wall masses and their affinity and lattice condition and optical phenomena. Phenom so when you are choosing a substrate, what kind of things? Uh, devices you are going to mount on your substrate and what kind of devices or uh, components you are going to design, you should consider all these uh, parameters in your mind that to choose a substrate. It's not about just about dietary constant you are choosing and you are simulating. So if you are simulating only based on that, this may not hurt you and uh, your uh, movement of your electrons inside that uh, you know, channel what you are preparing, it will not work properly. And of course, once you are making the hardware revaluation, once you are making machine prototype, it will not work. And your concept is chip support. So we have to consider that. This is just a 3D open cross-sectional view of the circuit. So some of highlights of this examples are like it's having a flat view, and the noise figure is very less. And, um, Mechanical size is very less, like this 1.7 centimeter box, 1.5. If you are making any of the box for it, uh, yes, uh, it may be like two plus one centimeter, I think. And we have used uh, hybrid MMS technique and uh, simple LC circuits and the uh, time transistor we have used. For using simple elements and all, this is an architecture. Except uh, S11 parameters at the initial uh, lower frequency. This design was almost complete for the situation. We talk about logical concept now. For any of the circuits, optimization, yield, and tuning is important. If your device is very strong and uh, if your topology design is very good, so then uh, you can make a manual tuning by gain insulation method. You can achieve some results. And if you are not, uh, after tuning, if you want to optimize to find values, is fine. But, uh, 
uh, if you are optimal modest or not good, then it will be end up with a wrong results again. And based on the uh, manufacturing tolerance, you have to think about it. These three techniques has to be coming to picture for any micro design. So we have to be more careful about uh, these three. And many people make the bad idea taking an art style from the IC board and placing the final layout from the schematic and external board. So if you are making like this, and you will end up with a um, wrong results. So as a designer, you have to prepare your own schematic for your complete circuit. So instead of getting from the external board, you have to prepare an art style of your own and placing all those elements in your so schematic is very essential. And of course, the tools will provide with um, <clears throat> different colors for all those uh, materialization and other things required for your circuit. But most of the time, what we think is that I want to place this transistor and this is single subject with the complete with the same metals and I'm using a different materialization. And if I'm not considering if I'm making any sort of pad for over here, if I'm making a sorting on over here, if I'm not considering a different metal in the simulation, then it will end up with the wrong results again. So what actually, and also if you are preparing an brass coating or cadmium box for this, uh, we have to think about uh, those settings in simulation and uh, what kind of an elements and their parasitic, all those things should be considered in a circuit, uh, in a simulation system. If you are not following all those things, what you are making in an hardware, that's why right, the substrate and hardware things, what you are deciding and what technique you are going to make uh, like HMIC or MMIC, if you are not sure about that, and if you are making the same things in your mistakes in your simulation, then your uh, amplifier will not work going to another uh, evaluation. And preparing a model layers. So art cells and symbols have been taken in the, um, in your EM structure and also with the model layers and uh, drawing layers are associated with that. And if you are not linking that into a schematic properly, and whatever you are placing your uh, cells, art cells in your schematic and it's not having a proper model layers or drawing layers, if you are exporting with a DDS uh, file for the fabrication, you will end up with a non layer. So modeling layers are very important, uh, um, very important things uh, when you design. And also layout processing file. We have to think about what kind of a manufacturer things like you need layout dimensions, color patterns, mapping your uh, uh, files and uh, transmissions and user interface and uh, mm, all those things has to be prepared while preparing a layout box when you should consider all those things in your mind. And especially with the resolutions, if you are making an optimization and uh, it has taken with the mm, very um, high precision things uh, and your uh, resolution is not say about uh, your manufacturing is having under micro standards. And you are using something like uh, in your uh, technique, you are using like 50 micron line and all. So you will be in the with along with us. So data resolution and layout resolution. And even like a grid size, if you are making as small as possible, is good. It may take more time for the simulation, but results are okay. So we should consider the database resolution and layout resolutions for layout person time. And when you are Having a multi layer concept, you can consider this as like a micro strip line or strip line, this is strip line and ground plane. So you can divide that into a different uh, inbuilt models or you are understanding transmission lines and all you can simulate it. This works well, no problem, but it should be in a proper way. So, and uh, in a similar way, we should fabricate in a proper way. So, regarding some of the EDA tools, I like to talk. Uh, so, EDS uh, simulator is quite very famous. Uh, it is having a um, schematic and layout with a unified form. Best part about this tool is it is having a thermal alloy. It is having uh, um, electrothermal analysis, also thermal analysis, and uh, it's having the power integrity and signal integrity of this tool. So, that's the best part. And it's having 3D simulation layers also. And it's very old company, it's having a big market, EDS simulator. And AWS is a very big company, it's fast growing and user friendly. Uh, but this company is providing different tools uh, for a different kind of environment. They are about uh, design environment and micro office for the component level. Uh, and this is for system level uh, design. And this to axiom analysis for an anti-analysis simulation. 
and best of all the best part about this tool is like it's having a featuring of IG. MMIC can be done. In uh, ADS we cannot do it MMIC, but here MMIC design can be done and uh, it's having a Axiom EM site, all those kind of um, good uh, 3D EM structure simulations and uh, synthesis methods are available in this tool. And this is one answers HFSL, so it's, uh, it's only for like the uh, EM structure simulations. Electrical size is not a constant. Uh, it can have a smaller or a bigger one. And uh, geometry complexity is complete, makes a complete uh, good 3D simulations for especially those who are dealing with uh, antenna and metal material and filters, all those things. People can use this HFSS to uh, uh, for the convenient method. And also CST is very much similar to HFSS, but the extra part of this tool is that we can deal with even passing and active elements in the circuit. So it's having very good DM uh, 3D evaluation circuits. And if I'm comparing these features uh, like uh, HFSS deals with the uh, APM technique and CST deals with the um, finite integration uh, technique. And this, uh, many people say it's more accurate, uh, but uh, for me it's both are same. Uh, but it's fast server because of time domain. It deals only with the passive circuit simulation. It deals with both passive and active. That means amplifier also can be done over here. And um, it deals with the mesh and DM circuit unless it's faster and accurate. But it deals DST mix with the multiple uh, simulations. HFSS deals with the frequency domain only, but here time domain frequency both. But the HFSS is part of data files and netlist at the background, so it requires 64 GB RAM. So, USD also require a bigger RAM, but if your processor is good, you can use the USD. And we need to talk about this two system level simulators, uh, compound level simulator like ADS and data. The serving huge market is having both signal integrity and power integrity. Experimenters are used for everything. That means all non linear analysis with respect to the systems can be made. But AWR is like fast growing user friendly like and license, they provide MMS and LHC manufacturing techniques are used and different tools will be provided for different kind of elements, different kind of models. That's a good thing. And then it's having unified models. So these are the plus point of that. And uh, thermal analysis is the uh, lit, uh, one electrothermal analysis and thermal analysis is the best part about this tool. It's having encrypted SPI simulation. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's if you're making with, uh, if you want to edit those models, it's difficult. And the statistical designs can be made, sensitivity analysis, and it's having advanced uh, model composer. This is useful for my again. And Cadence library is there in the state of there, but Cadence itself will provide this tool. So also, it comes with the different versions of the language, like the German, Chinese, so things and all. And if you are a new designer, if you are not uh, having a good uh, uh, micro knowledge about the components and all, means you can use some of the wizards available in this tool, like iMatch, iFilter, RF Planner, and uh, these are my just tested. These are some of the wizards which will be like useful for the beginners to uh, design uh, basic concepts of the circuit. So that's the best part. That's why it's called as a user friendly. So, in short, I like to say that one like AWR ADS are being useful for the active devices and the uh, mock technique and the models. And the HFSS, if you are some people say it's accurate, it's, if you, use, if you are, uh, want to solve your problem by your FEM technique, then you can go with that. And the pitch paper you have. CST also can solve many of the electromagnetic simulations. Uh, it can have, uh, manage the cholesterol. And we use FQQD technique. This is the best technique for the training simulation. It's like a good CPU. And if you are having a Pico kind of a tool, it's just for an wire and uh, RCS method. It's much useful for uh, designing any of the materials. Lumerica, if you are uh, dealing with both optical and electrical and thermal effects and FTP concepts, then Lumerica too. And uh, if you are IT3D, it's just for a single cleaner thing and filters not much uh, useful for the 3D simulation though. Console is a tool where you can have a design with the electrical structure. First, the heat, if you are, want to simulate uh, your uh, device into various uh, streams and all, then you can use console. Uh, 
for simple numeric and scientific computation only you can use like MATLAB, Labio, and Fountain. If the Labio, of course, if the national students provide some modules for your uh, simulation, then it's fine. You can make it an ordinary evaluation. Always with the MATLAB and Fountain, this is simple numerical and uh, scientific computation only. You cannot manufacture, you cannot layout, design, or it is very difficult. So what if even though if the MATLAB users has to come for micro news, uh, they can work on neural network and pattern recognition techniques uh, to minimize the computational things of the existing media tools and they can prepare the models for using still with the MATLAB. And so that's what, like in start, I like to say about some of the simulations. And the designs are of my circuits, I designed it for two stage device and amplifier, ultra wide band, three stage LNA. Uh, low cost product to think that and pair of uh, filters for light capture and uh, single stage uh, ultra wide band LNA and the ethnic of the development of amplifier. Not only this, I have simulated many other circuits and uh, successfully fabricated and tested in the labs and it has become useful and also a uh, few work attempted. So, yes, and uh, uh, thank you for listening and uh, this is our group in uh, Uppsala University Action Laboratory and the group name is called uh, Microwave in Medicine and uh, we have got a sufficient facility, many are like the postdoctoral and few are professors and uh, few are the PhD students and what we have is that we have got a clean room, we have got an FN chamber for testing the radiation patterns quite big enough, it can it can uh, we can uh, test the radiation pattern uh, with a bigger size vehicle and we have got a smaller simple measurement labs and we do prepare some phantoms for the this thing these are the phantoms so that means mimicking the tissues and uh, we do have uh, 3d model 3d uh, printing machines for that and we have got a um, clinic uh, with uh, um, with the minimum measurement uh, and also an associate with few doctors with our lab and uh, we not only this we do prefer many other uh, specialized micro sensors mm. and uh, I basically uh, basically I work with uh, uh, RF and micro part in our group so uh, I deal with uh, not only with uh, system design and component design ideas with even with the data analysis also with the help of our PhD student. I majorly work, I lead with some of the tasks in our projects. Most of them are funded from the uh, UK, uh, this thing, European commissions and Europe tasks. And uh, we do have uh, Marie Curie fellowships and many other fellowships. Uh, yes, uh, those are. <laughs> Those who are interested with uh, micro in medicines uh, kind of an applications, they can contact me even after uh, this presentation. And uh, thank you for your patience uh, and uh, thank you for listening. Hope you are you got some idea about microwave techniques and uh, models with respect to amplifier design. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. You gave a good insight about the design of microwave amplifiers. Hope everybody has got an idea and a new, uh, you can say, insight about how to proceed for the designing process. So without delaying the session, I would like to uh, introduce our next speaker. Uh, hello. Dr. Hello. Hello. hello yes, sir. questions. Yes, sir. So any uh, suggestions? Think, any uh, comment? Any? Okay. Or I thought uh, maybe at the end we can take it. Okay. No issue, sir. If yes, uh, yes, yes, please. If anybody from the audience having any queries, please put it up in the chat box, or you can unmute and ask. Okay. Thank you. So no, I I we have got. <laughs> they may take more time for typing. So okay. directly they can ask. No, no issue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, please uh, unmute yourself and put up your doubts. I think uh, Abey, sir, uh, some. Uh, okay. Yes, yes. Hello, uh, uh, hello sir. Hello, Pramod, sir. Uh, thank you for uh, such an uh, awesome presentation. 
uh, I have uh, this question: uh, Are these X parameters that you had mentioned in the beginning, uh-huh. the X parameter models, are they uh, are they the? Uh, I mean, is it the same like nonlinear models? Because in nonlinear models, we extract the different components like uh, transconductance and uh, all of them, and then make a nonlinear model, right? So, how are these X parameter models different from them? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. That's a good question. Uh, what I like to say is that uh, see, um, S parameter or X parameters, if your device is uh, up to three gigahertz, so most of the standards that you say about uh, uh, I simulate up to like three gigahertz some amplifier on this thing, I will make manufacturing and I will check the performance. It will not have much change. But uh, when we are dealing with higher frequency, say about up to five gigahertz or ten gigahertz. When you come with a non-linearity, this thing—if your dynamic range, say about your you are using for your amplifier, say about minus 30 dBm power as an input, or like minus 20 dBm or up to zero dBm, S parameter or your S parameter, both will give almost same results. When non-linearity comes, say about you want to give an input, uh, say about you want to uh, triggering the more than uh, 20 dBm signal. At that time, S parameters face because S parameters are such a like a matrix calculator. Simple it is like what it it will not deals more with the non-linear subcircuits. Say about so what I like to say about like I use simple FEM uh, uh, transistor. I will take S parameters of that. It is a simple file layer. Whatever you are giving, it will give only linear response of it. You are understanding my point. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, I am getting it, sir. Yeah. What is that is when you are making a matrix calculations and all, uh, some of the nonlinear effects mm-hmm. cannot be considered at that time. Say about even though I will show some of the like, uh, um, like uh, what is that? What will happen is that uh, even though if you are performing that experiment by using simple S parameter linear analysis, in once you make it hardware and testing, it will give some other result. So like uh, right. Uh, like that. So at the time, X parameters are like uh, what is it that those are work with not only with uh, incident wave and reflected wave. It will have it will consider right. some of the uh, say about for uh, some robust model. It will consider even some effects of uh, that device. So X parameters becomes more famous in the nonlinearity, and it will take more simulation time. Say about uh, okay. I am using nonlinear uh, applied model for the transistor and use S parameters X. I am talking about X parameters Hello. with EM structures. At the time, uh, yes, it will take simulation lo- longer time. So, Hello. Yes. All participants, please be very brief because the detailed discussion you can have with Doctor Pramod later on. Okay. <laughs> Sure, sir. Sure, sure. Yes. So, one, one, only one more question. Uh, can you suggest? Can you suggest any open source EM simulators? <laughs> are, are, uh, any, any, uh, you, if you are uh, aware of. Uh, see, there are some, uh, some like uh, based on your application, uh, there are like. Uh, mm, uh, probably for basic transmission line measurement. Uh, uh, there are some calculators are available, like uh, 3D transmission calculator from National Instrument, so that are free. And okay. uh, there okay. are some uh, some uh, like uh, simple. Uh, I use more with HFs and CS for constructors because those, those are more okay. Accurate. So that's like uh, so previous. I don't. Uh, right, I, right, don't right. I don't. I don't do this. Like uh, the intention was, there are many colleges who cannot even afford to buy such. Uh, even if they are uh, uh-huh. student versions or uh, uh, for institutes, they don't. They cannot afford to purchase. So I was thinking if there so are any if they are comfortable uh, with the MATLAB and all, all, even by using FTTD technique, 3D evaluations, mm-hmm. instead of 3D evaluations, if they prepare the neural network of uh, uh, the uh, structure, still they can proceed with MATLAB. Okay. So it's simple numerical technique, but uh, okay. the person okay. should have knowledge of... Nobajar, Abhay Kulkarni. Yes, yes. Please make Thank it you, sir. now to stop it because the other session has to start. Okay. All right. Thank me? you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the answer.
so any more dear queries we have to take or shall we move ahead yeah you can you can move with the no okay. more worry okay so every bill will take half an hour to discuss okay okay, okay. no problem sir okay. so yes. i would like to introduce our next speaker dr ns punawala sir uh, he he has uh, done his uh, be in uh, metallurgical engineering from coe he has done his uh, phd from uh, iit kharagpur and he is ame in foundry research he had uh, joined academics at vjti and uh, he rose from a uh, lecturer to hod in the product and in, uh, industrial engineering department uh, he is a member of uh, various professional bodies uh, i i e m i i e uh, f i i e uh, m i s t and there are many more uh, uh, he is uh, the part of these professional bodies uh, he is uh, currently working as dean in r&d section at uh, kc college of engineering management studies and research uh, i would like to welcome sir and uh, would ask him to take over to the session thank you thank you thank you anup kumar yes sir yeah i think uh, uh, good noon everyone uh after a very good sessions with uh, dr pramod i'll be speaking something very briefly about the manufacturing and quality in electronic manufacturing i'll tell you my little background how i came to electronics it it was a need and compulsion to go from metallurgical engineering to mechanical engineering to production engineering to electronics and computer engineering over the period of 50 years of my professional work when i graduated in 1967 i joined a foundry different foundries from 1967 to 1977 i worked mostly in the ferrous foundries cast iron malleable cast iron steel and other during that time my metallurgy knowledge of foundry i used to put it in production as well as i had to look after the marketing of my products quality of the product research in the product and so on at the end of my industrial work i landed in mukundayan and steel where i was doing some research on fluid sand process now this process was a russian process the company wanted to buy at the cost of 60 lakhs rupees from russian people but then my head of r&d told why not we develop that process indigenously and we started working on that process in india and after about 3 years we developed that process indigenously with indian raw materials etc and we could save the material save the cost of that 60 lakh and we developed that process in the indigenously so that was my first exposure to the research in the industry later on after 1977 i joined the department of mechanical engineering now you understand the people may be there from mechanical there is a subject called metallurgy which deals mostly with the microstructure of materials in any manufacturing so i was already was exposed to the micro qualities of the materials because of my background but when i went to mechanical i had to learn lot of thing at the, at the macro level manufacturing level and therefore i chose to go into production and after some years i went from mechanical to production engineering and that helped me into developing my micro as well as macro knowledge to become a professor of production engineer is a manufacturing now what i heard some of the things from dr pramod that that 
I learned little of things from uh, his lecture that there are not many things which are common when we do the work on quality. For example, rapid prototyping, 3D printing, computerized design and manufacturing, and all that I learned in mechanical department. And when I went to the production engineering, we also learned non-traditional machining technologies. That is very much relevant to the electronic manufacturing. Now, I'll tell you a small story of my younger colleague who wanted to do his ME, Master of Engineering in Production, uh, with uh, me. When I said, you do the work on electrochemical machining and electrochemical polishing, he said, sir, there is electrical engineering involved. I am a mechanical engineer. I said, if you are a mechanical engineer, you can also know the electrical engineer. Only thing you have to convert the AC, AC current into DC current to do electro machining or electro polishing. And therefore, you have to learn, if you don't understand, you go to the electrical department, understand how to convert, what are the equipments required. And then he did, with the help of BRC, he completed his master of production engineering in electrochemical polishing. It was a very good start, very good work. And afterward, he completed his work on micro machining for his PhD at IIT Bombay. So you understand that you may be from one field, but you may have to go to some other field to understand the, uh, the research and some detailed work of, you can't say that I am only electronic engineer, so I will not go into the details of material science or mechanical aspects. I'll start with some good stories. One small good story was a mouse trip. See, I have worked 10 years in industry, in the market, and therefore I understand that suppose whatever you manufacture, it should be also be sold in the market. In one of the conference, one very reputed gentleman, scientist, he said, if you can develop a good mouse trap, the people will make a queue near your house to buy that. That was a, his statement, and some people took it seriously, started working in developing the best mouse trap. You know mouse trap, Chowa Pakarneka machine. So people, they formed a group, somebody, a psychologist, some manufacturing, some electronics engineer, some mechanical engineer, and they started working on it. About three years, they did a lot of research on the behavior of mouse, how they behave, how they get attracted with the colors, with the food, with the environment and all that, and how they can enter into the trap. Once the trap, it enters into the trap, automatically the door closes, an electronic laser beam comes in, kills the mouse, and then your job of catching the mouse gets over. Now this, after three years of extensive research, they developed the product called a very good mousetrap and they displayed it in a mall in US and some other countries. So, and the price of that was about $1,000. So all uh, housewives, they started observing the thing, oh, mousetrap is available in the market. Every house has some problem of mouse. Even in India, we have that. Okay. So they went, they saw the, uh, they saw the demonstration of the trap. But when it came to the cost, they saw oh, it is very costly. The things are available at much cheaper rate. Our Indian mouse trap, which is simplest one with the spring, cost you around 50 rupees. You go for a little bigger wooden mouse trap, it may cost you around 200 rupees. Thousand dollars is too big. So they advertise everything, people appreciate, but nobody bought. And therefore that fellow has to close down his factory. So what I'm saying is that everything what you develop, 
has to have a lot of things should be affordable by the people who want to buy. Now, when I go over to the manufacturing and quality in electronic manufacturing, why I'm telling this story that everything we develop on research may not be accepted by the people unless it is affordable. Once upon a time, of course, the thing was difficult when uh, cars and even televisions, when they came, it was costly, only few people can afford. Today, the cost have come down, the people's income has increased, and therefore, many people can afford TV, fridge, cars also, because it comes in their ability to buy. Now, when we talk about quality in electronic manufacturing, I'll talk about quality, electronics and manufacturing first, and then we'll go into the detail. As an engineer, how do you do manufacture anything? When we when we do manufacture, can you see this? People, can you see this? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Uh, what is that? Cycle. It is a bicycle. Okay. This is a small model of bicycle. Below that is written Pro. Okay. Now, this small model is manufactured by a process called water jet machining. Can you imagine that this has been cut to this shape and this finance? Fineness by water jet machining. Just by simply water, this has been cut into the shape. This was displayed in the office of one of my friends. When I went to my, with my small son to his office, my son liked this very much. He was so much attracted that he was seeing only this. And that friend of mine gave him the present to him. And this is with us now. This is a process called water jet machine. This is an advanced manufacturing technology. We'll also discuss other processes. So what I want to say is that uh, when you do manufacturing, an engineer has some ideas. Ideas, you put it into a design. When you do designing, you also select materials. Then you put the materials and give the shape to it like a sculptor. Your idea comes are put into the product. Okay. Now, when you select the material, the important thing which you have to remember for material selection is what are the properties required in that material or that product. The most important is the required property. The second thing is ease of manufacturing. Is it possible? There may be many processes by which you can manufacture, but you have to select the process one which is easy to manufacture and less costly. The material and the pro uh, manufacturing process should be so cost that it should be available in the market and the cost should be minimum. So this manufacturing also depends on a process called Pygmalion effect. Whatever you think, Pygmalion effect is very much prevalent in uh, psychology. So whatever you think, you can give the shape and that will come alive. So these are the things which as an engineer we have to do. Now there are five important tenets of manufacturing. That's why I think everyone, every engineer, every teacher, everyone who does research also should remember throughout, throughout your life. We call it Panchapadi or Panchamrut or five important tenets of manufacturing. The first one is the quality. First one is quality. I will discuss everything after, but first is quality. Second one is productivity. Third one is the cost. The fourth one is the time of manufacturing or time of operations. 
and the last one is a customer satisfaction and customer delight and customer loyalty okay so first we start with the quality what is quality of a product anything whether you take any electronic product your mobile what do you see what quality you see in your product that it should fulfill the requirements what you are looking for the purpose for which it is designed okay and there are many things in quality a lot of work has been done all over the world in improving the quality of the product and the processes the quality movement came to japan first from two american professors who taught japanese people one was a professor joseph juran and the other one was edward denny these people started teaching uh, statistical quality control and all that to japanese people and japanese people with reverse engineering they started manufacturing the products which were very good in quality and therefore they took over the whole market of the world the japan is even today is the best quality of course there are some countries from uh, europe also like germany sweden and uh, what you call it uh, some other small countries who are specialized in some products so quality is one very important thing which you have to discuss i will be discussing the macro aspects and the micro aspect of quality little later on okay first one is the quality that is most important if your product is quality product then only it will survive in the market the survival of the fittest that you have to remember the second one is the productivity what is productivity there should be good output higher output with lower input now this productivity tells you about the better utilization of all your resources all your resources whether it is the manpower machines material money if you are putting something the more should come out with less input and this is very important okay now when we come to this productivity i also remember two important theories which have become very prominent all over one is the system theory anything you discuss or do research you have to think of system theory what is going in what is the transformation process what is going out what is the feedback what are the control system and how they control and how the output comes so input output with inner as well as outer environment is very important in uh, quality creativity is another thing everybody does the work the same be the same thing again i'll tell you a story of one of my student did the work in one company in industry in thane they were manufacturing a small fractional horsepower motors and when machining the rotor they had to do the machining but the spindle used to get worn out very quickly and after a few machining they had to change the uh, spindle on which it was mounted quite often now one of my student suggested something to the manager manager said we have been doing this work since last 30 years how this will work it was rejected initially but after some time he also worked detail how it can improve the productivity by putting a little cost you can save a lot of money and you can improve the production much better so after after some time the manager telephoned me and said your student has done so good work whatever we were not thinking last 30 years we have found out some new way of doing the work we have introduced that process and now our productivity is increased so our cost has come down so this is also important in manufacturing higher output with inner input okay 
there are a lot of things about productivity we'll say industrial engineering the whole new science which anybody from any area can work on and get the benefit is a interdisciplinary area of industrial engineering i feel that the people should also know little of industrial engineering when they are doing even research the third one is the cost you cannot reduce the cost totally but you can optimize the cost you can optimize the cost you can reduce the cost right from design to manufacturing and material a new science which is being taught to mechanical production and many other branches is the value engineering how you can improve the value of your product by reducing the cost by different method and the cost reduction because today in a competitive market unless your cost is acceptable by the your customers you cannot survive in the market so your better quality at less cost is also important the next one is the time all your processes of manufacturing should be time optimized processes time optimized process i remember one incident i was doing some training in one pharmaceutical company in tarapur near mumbai they were manufacturing drugs some drugs from the basic chemical they were converting to drugs it used to take seven days one batch i only talked so if you are doing research what you have to do is can you reduce your seven days manufacturing that process time from seven days to six days to five days to four days by different method there are methods like exothermic process endothermic process and so on and you can reduce your time of operation once the time of operations reduce manufacturing time you can reduce your cost and therefore many companies put that thing on their uh, plant they call it tops time optimized processes tops i have seen it in siemens in their matter and the last one is the customer satisfaction unless whatever you do if your customer is not satisfied he is not delighted by your product or your service it will not you cannot do your business there is good story about the a dogs food a company who are manufacturing dogs food in their annual general body meeting the people said we have spent so much time money on advertising and promoting our product but our sales are sales and profits are not improving somebody said have you asked the dog whether they like that food or not if your dog doesn't like the food then they will not eat if they will not eat the buyer will not buy and your company product will not sell so finally it is the customer who decide whether that product is accepted or not is a very good example then we will go over to the five elements i have already spoken now we will go over to the quality quality we decide by two things one is the macro aspect the macro aspect means you can see with your naked eye okay you can measure by calipers with micrometers and all that you can also see the surface finish surface irregularities uh, coatings surface finish and all that and therefore in manufacturing of any product you require a very good precision a precision engineering that is the precisely you manufacture the thing is important and electronic product the reason being that not only bigger product but because they are micro product very small products the precision of that product is very in micro in microns and below micro okay and therefore a quality control department in manufacturing measuring equipments like calipers metrology equipments gauges Coordinator measuring instrument, profilometers, and other things. After 
measuring the thing and therefore the macro aspects of things are important in electronic manufacturing the second thing is the micro aspect of manufacturing the micro aspects of manufacturing comes because it has to control the quality of the product i always tell the micro structure the micro uh, micro examination of the material the metallurgy or material science as a psychology of material as you study psychology of the people what are goes inside the body what goes inside the mind similarly what goes inside your product or material that determines its behavior outside and therefore micro examination with sophisticated equipments like transmission electron microscopy x ray mic x ray diffraction scanning electron microscopy and many others like dilatometer diffractometer and other things are important in precisely measuring the things when you are doing research okay in electronics the field as i remember many years before when computers were not prevalent i am from the 1967 batch where many of you were not even born so i understand once we had been to iit bombay and i saw the computer which was as big a very big hall around 40 50 feet long around 20 feet width and 10 feet height that was one computer doing the work on punch cards and all that the theory of small is beautiful came from japan and the people and other countries were doing research on that making the things smaller and smaller and this led to the computers becoming smaller miniaturization then you got the uh, table top computers laptop now palm top and you also got mobiles and mobiles okay so how it has how it has happened everywhere the in industries the people have try to make it smaller more efficient much better for example even in writing you, you talk of radio when i was listening binaka geetmala when i was a small child at my native place we used to go and we used to listen to murphy radio that was a wild big radio around 3 feet broad 1 feet height and giving a loud after that after few years the transistor radio came and the thing developed okay so miniaturization as happening in micro uh, electronics industry very much now for example they have said the level of integration in micro electronics if we discuss with 1955 the small scale integration 1959 it was 10 to 50 devices which used to come on a chip 10 to 50 in medium scale integration in 1960s the number of devices on a chip rose to 50 to 10 raised to 3 numbers and large scale integration in 1970 came to 10 raised to 3 from 10 raised to 3 to 10 raised to 4 devices on a chip and in 1980s very large scale integration we call it vlsi 1980 it went up to 10 raised to 4 to 10 raised to 6 devices on a chip ultra large scale devices in 1990 10 raised to 6 to 10 raised to 8 and giga scale integration in 2000 rose from 10 to 9 to 10 to 10 what does it say that you will try to make it more compact smaller and handy i don't want to discuss about the 
this is well advantage of mini carry we never used to take our radio with us when we used to move but when transistor came into the picture the people started moving in the market with the radio in the hand and today you see everyone listening to radio on the mobile with the uh, earphones it has given the facility but it has also disadvantage advantage because they don't want to listen to anybody else okay now many of these things has then then in japan i always being a production engineer i have learned a lot of things about japanese techniques and japan is one wonderful thing about improving the quality productivity fields they always try to put it when we discuss world class manufacturing world class so world class manufacturing takes into those five points which i have talked about and japanese people are very good at observing the things very minutely not like chal sab chalta hai like indian people we do we have to be very precise in studying the things what make the japan people little different from others of course there i don't want to say only japan people there are many people in many other countries but japan as a country has done wonders because they have become now very close to the american of course they had a lot of difficulties in the second world war atom bombs were put they were destroyed but they came up again and develop into a world class manufacturer japanese people are intelligent polite and they take care lot about their wellness their food their schools food lunch everything is standardized for the health they are very healthy i have heard that the japanese people don't become very fat they are lean so they also put lean manufacturing in the nrs they are very creative they have developed nameless paints color mixing very creative up to the age of 10 the student don't give any exam they only learn how to develop good manners good character and elegance in living healthy living uh, i learned little of color combination because i had to learn a lot of things when i changed from metallurgy to mechanical and now from mechanical i have come to electronics and telecom plus computer and it in my college we don't have mechanical or civil we only have computer engineering it and electronics and telecom so i am going from big to smaller one and then then for i have to learn even at this age i am very young of 75 but i have to learn if i have to exist or i have to be poor somebody in the school when i was a school we had a club a youth club and my chief personal general secretary had put up a small saying that go ahead if you want to go ahead in your career or as a student or whatever field you choose in the life you have to go ahead with grace grit gumption and guts you have to fight all odds and then only you can rise you cannot do anything in japan there is another thing i have learned that japan when the workers go to the factory i was doing some training in godrej and boys the first 10 minutes 15 minutes japan the worker has to clean their machines surrounding with their own hands they have to clean the thing see the machine everything is perfect and then only they will start production 
everything has to be checked before it starts. So it is preventive than uh, breakdown. They do a lot of importance to preventive maintenance. Okay. And even in the schools, they teach the students to clean their classrooms themselves. There are no peons to clean the benches and all that. Every student who goes to the school, they have to clean their own bench. I think we should also put that thing in our college, that students when they come, they have to clean their environment before they start the class. The teacher has to clean their tables. Okay. And then you have to, because these are small things, but they teach a lot of things as a discipline. Because Japan was having a lot of scarcity, one is the land and natural resources. They learned a lot of things by creative ideas. They bought many things from outside of their country. They made the product more value added and they sold it at a higher cost by value addition of the components and then they become rich. Important, which are very famous in Japan is the haiku. I think you must have heard small poems, two lines, three lines poem is haiku. Haiku is a small poem in Japanese. They also have ikebana, flowers which can be put on the table top, flower arrangement. They say manners before knowledge. I remember one of my students from VGTI passed out production engineering from VGTI, went to IIT Madras to do his MTech in machine too. That time my HOD was, he had done his doctorate in powder metallurgy from Kyushu University, Japan. And because of his contact, that gentleman, that boy, went to Japan to do his PhD work on laser technology, laser. In 1998, we had organized an international conference on non-traditional machining or advanced manufacturing technology. I had invited my own student as a keynote speaker because he had done a lot of work in Japan on laser technology. These are the new areas of window. Laser, all of you know, it's a white we use thing in production, a lot of thing in even electronic manufacturing, measurements, and many other applications. Even in medicine, medical field. Now, how do you go over to the manufacturing of uh, your electronic product? I understand that the material which we are, elements which we are using in it should be semiconductor. What is the semiconductor which is widely used in industry? Anybody can speak, say, Anupama, can you say semiconductor silicon? Isn't it? Yes, yes, sir. Silicon is widely used, of course, some research work, these people have used galenium and other materials, but they are very costly. The thing which should be available easily can we make it and therefore the processes, one process which I have asked is looping, which in metallurgy in our surface coating technology I also call it iron implantation. You can implant a small iron of other material or impurities in the material surface and you can change the property of the material to suit your requirement and implantation. I remember I was doing work on surface coating technology and one of my friends from BRC, he had done a lot of work on that. And when I attended some conference there, I learned a lot of things about surface engineering. The process of CVD coating, CVD and PVD coating, are widely used in industry for coating many surfaces for change. 
very simple example from the day to day life is your uh, spectacle many of you are using spectacle and the person who is rich they used to use gold plated frame to put it on their face once he puts golden frame on his eyes people think he is a rich man okay but everybody wants to look rich whether they are they are or they are not so uh, process was developed which is widely used now in the industry is a process called tin coating process titanium nitride coating process which coats the surface of the frame which gives a golden color the cost is not of gold it is a coating cost titanium nitride is not very costly available the cost is added little but it gives a golden color to the frame the people who cannot afford pure gold they can use titanium nitride coated gold frame golden color frame on their face okay so this is the research okay in lighting you had a tungsten filament lighting which used to use more power consumption because of heating of tungsten which is a insulator high temperature and therefore it generates a lot of heat then you went to the tube light and now you have lcd and other things so development is taking place in all the fields particularly in industry because they want to develop something new we can go into the market accept it and they can make profits and therefore i remember my two things both my research at mukundan and steel and iit kharagpur my project was sponsored by tata and and steel company when i was teaching machining science in vgti product engineering i learned that the cost of manufacturing depends on the machine cost material cost tool cost and worker salary and all that and i found the tool life is very low so if you i can increase the tool life tool cost was very high i said why not to develop we use high speed steel wood cutting which is costly why we not develop a tool steel which can cost less and have the same life or better life than what is existing so i did my research on that developing indigenous tool material which can work like a high speed steel at much lower one third or one fourth of the cost of imported material so the challenge of the indian entrepreneurs technologies is that can we have import substitute products which can cost less we can work on indigenous available material with your knowledge and technology the industry people mostly a very few industry use very high technology today and they employ very few phds people i don't want to discuss my own experience when i went to an industry they said we don't require a doctor we require a simple man who can take out the production with the buyers and the worker we don't want to do research that is the problem with many of our industry unless you want to do research you cannot become world class to become world class you have to develop your quality new product design new innovation new creativity and so on now another thing which is very important from material science point of view in manufacturing many of the materials are isotropic in nature when i was doing some work my students used to take training in fountain and grooves i remember they were manufacturing stamping for the transformer the steel which was used steel sheets which were used as a silicon steel silicon steel are used widely in the transformer stampings somebody from sl sales steel authority of india limited 
at Ranchi, they develop grain oriented non isotropic sheets. When you are uh, you use isotropic, the material properties are same in all the disease. But when you develop into a non isotropic, either by magnetic method or other, the grain gets oriented in the direction in which it should have higher property. And this non magnetic property, those steels are known as cold roll grain oriented, cold roll grain oriented silicon steel, which can give less electrical losses and better performance in transformers. So this is how the research is being done. Okay. Now you can, what are the techniques for quality, productivity, cost, time, and customer? I'll just briefly say because now it is almost coming to one, quarter to one. Technique for quality is the, there are tools for quality. Histogram, fishbone diagram, zero defects, quality function deployment, Kaizen, Pareto chart, okay, okay, mistake proofing. These are the tools for quality control, statistical quality control, statistical process control, and zero defects manufacturing. The second one is the productivity. Productivity is a basic science which is widely known as the industrial engineering. And it has a time and motion study or your method study and time measurement. How you can improve your methods of manufacturing, how you can reduce of time of manufacturing, and how you can improve your productivity. The low cost automation. People are talking of automation, which many countries in the West are using. But in India, the full automation is not only costly, but it also gives a problem of unemployment. A lot of people are unemployed, and therefore, we have to work on low cost automation, simple automation technique by which the automation can be, the benefit of automation can be achieved. A lot of industry I have seen, they have used this low cost automation with a simple technique of improving the product. Okay, I had a opportunity to visit many industry, manufacturing industry in Bombay and around Bombay, Pune, Nagpur. And I found that many big industries like Larson Tugru, Fronton View, Mahindra and Mahindra, and many others, they have used this low cost automation to their men. They have also introduced the quality techniques, ISO 9000. They have also gone for the um, Deming Award. Mind and Mind has gone Deming Award for the Deming Award. This is the highest quality award from Japan. Deming Award after Edward Deming. Then there are uh, ISO 9000. Excellent business, excellent award by many companies in India also. There are some are internal, like Tata, they have their own internal excellence award. CII, Confederation of Indian Industries, have instituted their own best awards. I was the examiner with RBN, Ramkrishna Bajaj National Quality Award, and I had visited about I had examined five to six industries in the span of five years between 2004 and 2009 at different places in India. And they got the awards also, but they have used many techniques, particularly this balance scorecard for improving their performance. And therefore, Time motion, low cost automation, layout designing, also very important. Computer aided layout designing is another area where people can do work. 
I remember one of my student, MA student, had done some work at Siemens at Aurangabad. They were using a big space for the layout. He studied on computer aided layout by simulation he could reduce the area, and lot of area was available for the further additional production. Value engineering. One of the student design change the design. Of a rickshaw, auto rickshaw, and reduce the cost by thirty percent. What was the cost of manufacturing? It was reduced by thirty percent in Bajaj Auto factory at Aurangabad, Walut. So these are the things which one has to do. And customer satisfaction cost I already mentioned. Value engineering, design, material and processes. And time, better methods of doing the work, of improving the process and product, and customer satisfaction feedback. Customer feedback is very important in the improving your product. Japan. One story goes for the Japanese people that one car manufacturing company they open a small restaurant near a petrol pump. And that they will give free service for getting the your car filled up with fuel. In the and you have to sit in our restaurant. They were running the restaurant, but they were taking a lot of feedback from them to improve their product. This is how the things works in in the whole world. You cannot remain. Confine only to yourself. You have to exist in the world, and therefore today the whole world is one market. Globalization, localization, privatization, and globalization. One has to be very creative. And so I think, uh, uh, and after all, you have to be a human. How? Uh, Completed my writing on human engineering in March, and I learned that after so much of work in technology, we have to be finally we have to be human first. When we are now with the COVID-19, you find that all the thing doesn't matter except that you have to show your humanity, human values, compassion, and other thing. And if you want to become a good researcher. A good teacher, a good engineer, either in industry or academia, you have to remain as an alchemist. I remember one of my professor used to say, when I came across some professors in my own college at Pune, College of Engineering Pune, as well as IIT Bombay, when I was there for some time, that you have to see dreams, you have to dream. The professor used to say, "I am a sapno ka saudagar. I always see sapna, and what new I can do it." And that led him to, as an invited speaker at American University, as a guest speaker, invited speaker in U.S. And one professor used to say, "As a metallurgist, you have to be alchemist, a kimiagar." If you can do some work, can develop some process where the iron which you get can be converted into a gold, you will become miller. See, your work should be to convert iron into gold. The people are trying, but not getting it is not very easy. But then that should be the aim of converting iron to gold, and that is the motto of our alchemist. And therefore, we have to study. Not only macro aspect of things, we have to also go into the micro aspect of things. And when a person does research, he is more concerned with the micro aspect of manufacturing, aspect of their product, and and therefore measurement is very important. I think uh, this is good for the today's work. If you have any question, you can ask. Otherwise, we'll close. Okay.
anupama hello participants yeah hello participants if you have any queries to be discussed please respond hello for dr pramod sir or punawala sir acha dr pramod sir ke liye mera ek question hai i think i'll start i'll just ask one okay, question sir. is dr pramod there yes sir he is there yes i am dr pramod yes i have one friend in this factory he is a president of american society of metals in new bombay rabale hello he is having a forging shop hello are you hearing uh, yes sir so he is having a factory of uh. forging metal forging uh. this forged parts are used in many industries either in aeronautics or automobiles and other thing they are manufacturing uh, forging now mm -hmm. for forging the metal has to be heated up to some higher temperature mm -hmm. make it red hot and then it has to be forged in the yes, machine sir. yes sir there with some american university started some research center they call it uh, industrial microwave research center microwave mm -hmm. research. what was the reason that when we use the oil fired furnace or gas fired furnace is for heating the metal lot of heat get wasted mm -hmm. in heating mm -hmm. very little heat goes into the heating the metal the other heat get wasted and therefore the fuel consumption is very high mm -hmm. they did some work on the they were doing the work on mm -hmm. heating of metals by mm -hmm. microwave i just wanted to know whether that is possible or how it can be used yes uh, yes for the microwave there are like uh, one technique is called uh, htcc that is an uh, high temperature co fired uh, uh, ceramic uh, method so what happens is that for htcc and all for higher frequency if the circuits are very smaller then we can proceed because now the size of our circuits which we are using are in like in 1 plus 2 cm like sometimes even bigger than that For all those things, we will go with HMIC, just a simple, uh, uh, yeah. good resolution PCB standard thing. That is uh, absolutely good for if it is like uh, uh, if it is with a low temperature means LTCC. If it is high temperature means for microwave, they use only two techniques: LTCC and uh, HTCC. That's okay, it. fine. Yes, I've seen that set up with some of my colleagues at this ah. Ravalya factory. Yes, yes. Uh, for in our labs, actually, for microwave, we have yes. got like a UV exposure beds, and we will be taking care with an acid bleaching and other thing. Uh, we do have lithocam access. That means lithography on the silicon wafer. We will make uh, certain even at the nano structure. There we will be using a temperature as a constant. So it's not like uh, what you have said, like in a furnace kind of a thing. We don't require that. We will have a micro tubes. Uh, with the silicon wafers, that is the nanotechnology. In Very our lab, uh, we you go up to 10 nanometer technology channels, okay. up to 10 nanometer with the specialized okay. uh, developers. With that. So we, currently, we are not using those kind of things in our labs. Uh, we are restricting our research in uh, Einstein laboratory with uh, lithography technique and also with UV exposure only. <laughs> We are not making any LTCC in our labs. Okay. Yeah, that is more expensive. Sir, I will show you some of the parts which I have collected, which uh -huh. were made by electrochemical polishing. Uh huh. Chemical polishing, chemical machining. Uh huh. These are very small, very small precision parts. I will show you. Sure, sir. You please share all those things uh, after the this thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. After this thing uh -huh. is over. Uh -huh. Once you finish your, uh -huh. anybody else questions? So I think uh, no yeah. questions. I guess. Okay. So I think if there are no questions before your word of thanks and closing, I'll show you some products. Which I have retained with me to show you. See, this is one. This is another one. Can you see the thing? 
This you cannot manufacture by simple mechanical process. Yes, sir. This is made by electrochemical machining. And you see this precision of this thing. Voila. So fine, so thin, also very thin. It's manufactured. By electrochemical machine, chemical, photochemical milling, and there are many others. I don't want to go into, but there are many products which are very fine and very small and very. See this plate, this side plate. They have slots which are very small. You think when you want to work on nano level or micro and nano level, you have to go into the Very precision manufacturing. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. So to conclude, I would like to present my vote of thanks. Guitar. I'll show you a guitar. Small guitar made. One brass. Simple. Thank you. Yes, sir. So the, the they were very fine and very thin materials. It was very beautiful to see this kind of miniature components. So I'll conclude the session now. Uh, so I would like to present my vote of thanks to Dr. Pramod Rangaya, who gave their valuable time. to make this webinar a success he enlightened us with various concepts of designing of microwave amplifiers dr punawala sir explained the quality in electronics manufacturing so he explained though you are design you have designed any product if you are unable to sell it it will have if it will not have its importance so uh, both of the speaker gave a good uh, knowledge about the topics and uh, now i would like to thanks all the participants to make this event more lively and interactive i want to thank our chairperson dr harsh khanna madam our md dr sai kiran khanna sir our ceo dr pooja rai pradhan our principal dr vilas nitnavre dr arundhati chakravarti our vice principal for their encouraging guidance madam narang ji Uh, pushpa narang ma'am uh, our uh, director of the college a uh, special thanks to dr punawala sir dean uh, r&d at kcc msr for introducing such a wonderful webinar and for giving me the opportunity to organize and execute the event thank you all thank you very much have a good day thank you everyone thank you